What's up guys, it is Jay Beeves here. And if you think back to recent Champions League history between Spanish clubs, obviously you think of Ronaldo dominating Atletico Madrid. Barcelona was also very good there. Real Madrid was good. I mean, Atletico Madrid made the finals they never won, but they were very good. So Spanish clubs, up until recently, have been very, very good. I'd say from 05 to 2019, Spanish clubs were some of the best clubs in Europe. And we're looking to restore that, okay? We're trying to win the Champions League. We're facing off against another Spanish team in the Champions League final. But first, I wanted to point out something. I have made this video on my channel. If it isn't already out, it should be out soon. But FIFA is idiotic and stupid. This only happens when your financial objective is a medium objective, but if you are a huge club, you will have a stupid goal, like finish with 5.9 profit, 5.9 million profit at the end of the first transfer window. I all I had to do was start the start the save. I already got that. I already have it like a 15 million dollar profit. But when you are a fourth division English side, you need to have finish the season with a profit of like 295 million. So that video is out on my channel. Just want to do a little bit of a rant because it's ridiculous. And the next series that you watch, I do get fired because of it. So Marco Nunez will be going on a one year long move to Villarreal. Joining the team, another center back we're stealing from Piemonte Calcio is Matthias Delict. Obviously, one of the hottest center back commodities last season. He's, I mean, he's been decent this year, but. If you don't play in the Premier League, you're not going to get talked about at all, and once Van Dyke is done, everyone's just going to compare him to him, so he's in a tough position, but I think I think he could end up actually working out. But we're not going to be able to see him for a while because he does have a broken tibia. He's out for the next five months. I knew that was the case when I signed him, so it's not like this is a big deal, but he is a signing for the second half of the season. Gilbert Adzmenska has been sold to Nimes Olymp for 1.7 million. Alex Ramiro, I have decided to buy to add a little bit of depth at that goalkeeping position, really get a solid backup. Got him for 20.2 million. Just needed a solid backup behind Nunez at that goalkeeper position, and hopefully you can get a little bit of a goalkeeping rotation going on. Kerkaburu has been sold to Italian side Torino for 84.8 million. Ruben Burha is joining the team from Youth Academy to add some depth to that goalkeeping position. Manuel Mohamed is going to get sold. So will this guy. And unfortunately this guy as well. Youth Academy, it's pretty much pointless at this point, but you, I mean, you just never know. Um, we're sending our scout to Spain to get some wingers. Sending another scout to Italy get to get some defenders and sending a final scout to Portugal to get some strong players. And we have been drawn in Group F of the Champions League. We are in what I think is the group of death, but I also just kind of wanted to point out, I swear, I swear this is a very common grouping. I swear it's usually Dortmund and Bruges, I think are usually in a very similar group. I think Slavia Praha and Dortmund are usually in a pretty similar group. I think if you were to replace us with Man City, this group has probably happened like 15 times before. Very common group, or maybe it's just that, I don't know. If, I think it's common. But Khalid Nasser will be going on a two-year loan move to Villarreal. Manuel Contreras will be going on a one-year loan move to PSG. Very, depending on who you ask, step up. I think it's a good job for him to get some good playing experience at France's best club. And we are now hosting Borussia Dortmund in the Champions League. And last season, we experimented with a 5-2-3. This season, we are using a 3-4-3. So, Mengi, Marchant, and Vaz are the center backs. Nunez is in goal. Obviously, Delict will join that back three once he's healthy. Bate and Luku are the center mids. Cowell, Cordoba are the outside mids. Montero, Chiesa are the outside are the wingers. And Pippi is our main man up top. Here are the highlights.
6-0 win, well, a 2-1 two, two win with 6.0 expected goals. It could have been a 4-1 four to, four to one win. Um, we were firing on all cylinders offensively. Team looks good. I like the formation. I like the tactics. I like the style. I think this might be, you know, this might be our new team identity. First of all, Vargas will be joining Santa Clara for 1.6 million. And we're back. Now we are traveling to face Borussia Dortmund. The lineup is the same as it was last game. Don't fix it if it ain't broken. Here are the highlights. Like I said, last game it could have been 4-1, 4-0 to victory for us, absolute domination, and this essentially clinches first place in the group stage. And excellent news now, Delict has been cleared to return from injury, obviously I'm not going to stick him in the lineup right away, but he's going to be getting back into things. So things are starting to all kind of come together now, especially since we are first in La Liga as well. And of course, we finished first in our group, and now we're going to be facing off against Leipzig. Radal Naranja has been sold to Hertha Berlin for $83 million. We have done a lot of business with Hertha Berlin and Stryker, so this is not surprising to anyone. But we did get a little bit of bad news before we get into our big Champions League game, as Marchant has picked up a hip flexor injury. He's going to be out for two weeks. Not a major injury, but two weeks is an entire tank. It's a draw. It's a home and away fixture. So on the first leg, we did lose 1-0. Manager of the month award we got in February. But we came back, we clutched up in the second round, or in the second leg. We beat Leipzig 2-1. Guido Colombo is joining the team from the Youth Academy. Uh, I think it might end up being too little too late, but he could actually, he might actually end up being our backup defensive midfielder, honestly. Um, I don't think... Zelai Jai will end up being a good player, but 80 to 94 potential. Argos Kyrgios, backup striker. So we're facing off against PSG now, a 2-2 draw. And 2-1 in the second leg, which means we're advancing yet again. Facing off against Man City in the first leg, a 2-2 draw. They do have Holland, which is very concerning. But 2-2 draw in the first leg, we have to play the second leg. It's just... We just have to. And here's the lineup that we're going with. Delict, Vaz, Merchant are the center backs. Bate and Luku are the center mids. Cowell, Cordoba, outside mids. Montero, Chiesa are the wingers. And Pardo's at striker. Pepe is out with a suspension, I believe, so he will not be able to play this game. So, in steps Pardo. Here are the highlights. A 2-0 victory 
means we are going to the Champions League final. This was a semi-final game. Easy win for us. Mengi will be departing the club. He will be joining Real Madrid when his contract expires. Which is going to be quite awkward for him, depending on how this game goes. Champions League final at the arena off Schalke. Real Sociedad B versus Real Madrid. All Spanish Champions League final. Recent history says that Real Madrid wins this in a late dramatic fashion against us. But we're here to change history. We're here to define things. And looking at the journey to get here, they had the much easier journey. They faced off against Porto, who aren't that great. Liverpool, they're pretty good, but AZ from the Netherlands? Yeah, right. I mean, we had Leipzig, who are, I don't know how good they are, but PSG and then Man City. So we've definitely had the tougher road to get here, but none of that matters anymore because it's all about this game. And this is the Real Madrid lineup. They have Courtois in goal, Martinez, Tanganga, center backs, Riva, Diallo, outside backs, Locatelli defense mid, Bruno Fernandez, Pellegrini center mids, Ruscha is the center forward, Rodrigo and Vinicius Jr. are the wingers. Those wingers are very concerning, very scary, but that defense does not look that concerning. I think we stand a very good chance if we get our offense rolling early. And here's how we are lining up. Obviously, Nunez is in goal. Faz Delic, Marchant are the center backs. Bait Loku, center mids. Cal Cordoba, outside mids. Montero, Kiesa are the wingers, and obviously Pepe's the main man up top. This may be the last episode, this may be the last game you ever watch with this team. So sit back, savor it, enjoy it. Here are the highlights. We did it. We did it. We won the Champions League. And not most importantly, if you guys haven't been paying attention to the series, Luku, that center midfielder, brought him up from the Youth Academy. Preloaded Youth Academy player from the first season. He gets the winning goal. He wins us the Champions League. Perfect storyline. Could not have written anything better. And we get to beat Real Madrid in the Champions League final. And the series is now officially over. But what a journey from us. And I'm honestly just so happy that we get to continue into our next journey. So Delict picked up a tibia injury. He's out for seven months, but that doesn't matter anymore. We ended up winning La Liga as well. We won the Copa de España. We won the Champions League. We were unstoppable. We deserved everything we got. We're the best team in the world. Luku appeared in every single game for us. Vaz, Marchant, Kawa, Kiesa, all but two, and then the rest. Kiesa led the team in goal score with 23, Montero behind him with 23, Pepe with 20, and Luku with 17. Luku had the most assists with 14, Kiesa had 13, and our goalkeeper Nunez had two. 
now we're just gonna go, we're just gonna, we're just gonna look back at the team, look back at how things went. I mean, Chiesa was one of our best transfers. I think that is a very obvious thing. Uh, we were only to get him, able to get him thanks to selling Caden Clark, who was a key player for us, but his transfer helped push us over the hump. Cade Cowell, if it were not for that loan move that I sent him out to Chelsea last season, he would not be here right now. And then obviously, Luke, who my pro proudest project from, I mean, he was day one from the Youth Academy. He was in there. Got him up to the first team, and he's played and improved so well. Obviously, Messi's regen, another little, uh, little bit of a revenge type of thing against Real Madrid. Delict, barely played for us, but he was key for us. Bate, got him at like a 72 overall, made him up to a 89. Pepe, hopefully he can replicate this, just like Howell as the Americans. He's up to an 89. Nunez in goal was a rock for us. A little bit sad, Nunez couldn't be a part of the club, but he didn't fit in the system anywhere. Foz was an absolute weapon after he came back on loan. Marchant was an excellent transfer as well. Cordoba really proved himself toward the end. Pardo actually ended up coming in clutch. Did not think that would happen but when Pepe went down with his injury. Benagre never just really fit in with the club. Mengi is a trader and he's joining Real Madrid. Have fun with that. Cucci just never had a chance to play. Remio, excellent back goalkeeper. Ray, when he was with us, was very good. Aziz Contreras never really played. Escobar Shigari never really played. Galbraith, although he was never a starter, was very key for us in very certain moments. Injuries would happen, he would come in and play for us. In a different world, I would probably play him a little bit more. And this is it. This is the Champions League winning side. I mean, 87 overall is our lowest. Everyone's still young and improving. I think we get a couple of these guys to 94, 95 plus. But obviously, we won't have a chance to do that because... The series is now officially over. So guys, we're done. That's it. The series is over. It was a really fun journey. I really enjoyed doing this in Spain. Obviously, things are obviously always more exciting towards the end, especially when you're just, you know wheeling and dealing, signing all these players, trading, selling these players, sending them out on loan, doing all these things. But from day one, it was fun. It was a nice journey. And I can tell you that the next series debuting tomorrow will be a Sutton United Youth Academy Road to Glory, where I can only use players from the Youth Academy with Sutton United down at EFL League 2. But if you've been paying attention, you know how that series ends already. Thank you guys for watching, and it is Jay Beans signing off.